Hey everyone! Okay, so today we're going to finish up going over the promises of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So we remember that the promises Jesus makes to those of us who are devoted to Him and to consecrate ourselves to His Sacred Heart are not a magic charm or some type of superstitious idea, but rather we know that as we become um, more intimate, better friends, of the sacred heart of Jesus, that um, these gifts come just as a fruit of knowing him better, who is our God who loves us, right? So we saw um, the first six promises in the first video, how Jesus will be there to accompany us in our afflictions, to comfort us, to be a refuge for us, to give peace to our own hearts and to our the lives of our families, the lives of our homes, um, and that he will give us all the graces necessary for our state and life. So today we will see the last six promises that Jesus offered to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. So the seventh promise is that lukewarm souls will become fervent. So there's a, a really strong passage in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, when Jesus says that those who are lukewarm will be, he he will spew them out of his mouth. He doesn't want them because they are neither cold nor hot. So it's disagreeable to him. So to be a lukewarm soul means to always be complacent, happy with the way things are, never desiring something more, right? We see um, that we remember that the heart of Jesus is on fire, literally burning with love, right? So lukewarmness, tepidity, weakness has nothing to do with the heart of Jesus. And so if we get closer to the heart of Jesus, but we are lazy or complacent or lukewarm about certain things, we will become souls that are burning with love for God. And Jesus also promises in the eighth promise that fervent souls, so those souls that already do burn with love for God, will mount to higher heights of perfection, that we will be free from sins and be able to follow Jesus in a way that is pleasing to him, right? So that's the eighth promise, that we will become great saints if we are already on fire with love for Jesus. The ninth promise, I will bless every place in which an image of my heart is exposed and honored, right? So if we um, can do the practice of the enthronement of the sacred heart of Jesus, or if in our, our bedroom or something like that, we can hang up an image of Jesus of the sacred heart for us to see it and remember every day that we are consecrated to him, but also in a place that, that other people can see when they come visit, that they can recognize that Jesus is the king of my heart, that this place belongs to the sacred heart of Jesus. Jesus will pour out his blessings upon that place. In the 10th, Promise is specifically for priests. Jesus promises to give priests the gift of touching the most hardened hearts, right? And especially, this is applicable in the sacrament of confession, to be able to win hearts who are who are separated from God because of sin, a priest who is devoted to the sacred heart of Jesus, who is conformed to the heart of Jesus, who desires to have his own heart burn with the love of the heart of Jesus, will be able to draw sinners away from their sins and bring them closer to Jesus, especially in the sacrament of confession. The 11th promise, those who shall promote this devotion shall have their names written in my heart right? So we can know that Jesus, um, as much as we are thinking about him and doing things that please him, that we try to ever live out more perfectly our consecration to his sacred heart, if we are thinking about him more, if he is in our hearts, we can be sure that we will be even more um, deeply in his heart, right? So he promises to have our names written in his heart, that we will be there um, for him to love us even more. Okay, and the last promise is the best one, the most important of all of the promises. Um, Jesus promises to give all of those who are devoted to his sacred heart the grace of final perseverance. Final perseverance is called the grace of graces because what that means is that we will persevere in the life of grace, that we will die in the life of grace, which means what? Which means we will go to heaven, right? Only souls who die out of grace go to hell. So 
The way in order to fulfill our part of the relationship, the promises that we make, is to go to Holy Mass and receive communion every first Friday for nine months in a row, right? So the first Friday of a month, we'll go to the Holy Mass. We will specifically pray in reparation for the sins committed against the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We will beg for the grace to love Him more. And when we receive Holy Communion, we will think about um, how we can be pleasing to the heart of Jesus, right? How we can more perfectly live out our consecration to him. And of course, this always means that we receive communion in grace, which means going to confession um, very close to the time we receive communion in order to be able to fulfill our part of the promise so that at the end of our lives, we can be sure that we will be taken right up into heaven to be with Jesus. So these are beautiful promises. Um, and so we ask the grace to be faithful to the consecration so that we can also be inheritors of these great promises that Jesus in his sacred heart has made to us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.